Greetings and welcome to In-Depth. I'm DK Rostar. We are putting a face to the name and speaking to the issues faced by the Greater Tunapuna Chamber of Industry and Commerce with President Ramon Gregorio. Welcome, Mr. Gregorio. How are you doing? Not too bad, DK, and thanks for having me on your show this evening. Really, our pleasure. And I want to ask, though, because from, I think it's from July to now, the, 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 the shift in title from director to president, what do you think is the, is, is the greatest change thus far? Well, being part of the chamber for the past three years, two and a half, three years, um, I've been very close to the issues at hand that have been affecting Tunapuna. So when I was asked to accept the presidency um, earlier this year, I felt it was a natural fit simply because um, we had discussed it at a board level uh, over a number of occasions. We had discussed the issues. We have been reaching out to the membership, even during the pandemic. And we were, I think, by the time the opportunity came up to be the president, um, I would have been well versed and well, well, I would have understood a lot of the challenges facing the, the businesses in Tunapuna. And do you ever find, or has it ever been shared with you that? A, a role like this, you can approach it wanting a, a rising tide to lift all boats or saying, okay, well, I want my business to do better than yours because you're also in that position. So how do, how do you approach it? Well, I consider myself to be a servant leader. I believe in uplifting the businesses. And if all the businesses around us could thrive or have the opportunity to thrive, then my business will be able to thrive. So, for example, very early in our in 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 my presidency, just yesterday, as a matter of fact, we did a listening tour where we walked around Tunapuna along with the member of parliament for the area, Esmond Ford, um, the police, other other chamber members, where we wanted to listen and understand because coming out of the pandemic, um, as you know and as you as you as you would have recognized, it's a very challenging period for small and medium-sized businesses, and that is where our focus is as a chamber over the next two years is really or any small and medium-sized businesses, we're listening to them, working hand in hand with them to be able to, to, to really realize their full potential because a small business today is a big business tomorrow. So once we are able to facilitate the growth of the small and medium-sized sector and to be able to put programs and put, 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 put things in place, be it um, adding value via educational programs, providing other services as a chamber, we would all benefit as a, as a business community at Trinidad and Tobago, not only Tunapuna alone. And I really like that you said a two-year focus on SMEs. And with that in mind, who really comprises the membership of the chamber? What does that membership look like? Oh, it's a combination, obviously, by virtue of the fact that we are in the Tuna, Greater Tunapuna region. And Tunapuna, this chamber, the Greater Tunapuna Chamber of Industry and Commerce, covers areas from Silver Mill and Sao to um, our parts of Aruka. Then on the southern side, we are going to Piaco and parts of Karani, Karani East. As a matter of fact, today we met with the MP for Karani East, um, Richard Tichiran, um, and his team, where we also discussing and, and finding ways where we could synergize and SMEs in there, in that particular constituency, how we could assist and how we could play a greater role as a greater Tunapuna chamber. It's not just for Tunapuna, it's for all persons that fall under the ambit of, of the GTCIC. So Tunapuna, while it, the name may be Tunapuna, we don't necessarily reside in this one physical space alone. Well, I didn't realize Karani East was a part of it as well. That, that, that is news to me, so thank you for that. But what are some, what's some of the feedback you're getting both possibly from MPs as well as some of those businesses, is are there common threads that you're saying? Okay, well, yes, we're hearing this from different from different areas, so we want to focus, we want to lock in on this. What are some of those things? Well, um, then no surprise to us, DK, crime. Crime must be the one common factor between both 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 segments. Um, the businesses, of course, the ease of doing business um, is affected by crime. The ease of doing business and 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 doing. So having a successful business um, is challenged by the, 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 the level of crime and criminality in the country right now. When we did, when we conducted our walkabouts um, and our listening tour just yesterday, 
yet again, being echoed by the, by the, by the business owners. Um, crime is a big challenge. The MPs have been saying, how do, we, how do we eradicate crime? How do we get it under control? I mean, eradicating crime is a bigger social issue, but how do we get it under control with the ease of doing business in our jurisdiction? And by extension, the rest of the country becomes easier. And I, as a business chamber, we'll continue to seek the answers and we'll continue to um, survey our members to, 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 keep, to keep in touch, to be able to keep, to keep on the pulse, to understand how it is affecting them. So in, in our chamber, just in the, in the immediate Tunapuna area, for example, persons are closing earlier. Persons are very guarded. So they've been calling for more police patrols. And um, we have the we have a fantastic um, Tunapuna police station um, representatives who accompanied us on the on a on the journey yesterday. And they and, and we have some immediate quick wins that we could install that would that would give business owners a bit more comfort um, as it as it relates to this particular area. But crime is the one common theme, whether it's MP, whether it's business owner, that's a common theme that that keeps playing over and over. And I'm glad that we're having this conversation now, Mr. Gregorio. This actually reminds me of conversations that we've held with the Coover Point Lisa's Chamber of Commerce president, uh, as well as the Greater San Fernando Chamber of Commerce president. And he would, he would have also featured in a, a recent newscast talking about crime specifically. But the fact that there are so many individuals holding hands and saying, okay, well, this is what we want. We want to work together to do better. What's the significance of that? Having the input from different areas MPs, law enforcement, business owners, and possibly even more. Does that make it easier, or is that a matter of more cooks making a making a worse soup? Well, it's a, it's a bit of both. And sometimes when we walk out and we, when we go on our tours, we hear we hear the frustration because this is no surprise stuff. We have heard this before. We have seen this before. What are you bringing new to the table? I think on the contrary, if we take it off of the table and we don't apply the requisite pressure to the, the, the powers that be, the Ministry of National Security, um, and we don't, we, we wouldn't apply that pressure in a meaningful way, we're going to be starting over the cycle every five years of a, of a new government or every every new Minister of National Security. So what we have to do is, as a chamber, and, and I mean as a citizen of Trinidad and Tobago, also be very responsible and continue the dialogue. Because if we, if we let it fall to the wayside, we're going to see the effects and it's going to spiral much more out of control. So we like, we prefer the, the, the hand-holding approach. We prefer the combination approach. What you have one particular strength, you may have a particular network, you may have a particular um, um, voice. Let's combine them and make representation so that our citizens, be it from Tunapuna or elsewhere, will feel more comfortable doing business and, and just moving along with their basic lives and their daily lives um, on, a, on, a, on, a, on a daily basis. All right, Anna, on this point, we take a short break. We are speaking with President of the Greater Tunapuna Chamber of Industry and Commerce, Ramon Gregorio. Stay with us. We return with more. Welcome back. We are speaking with Ramon Gregorio, President of the Greater Tunapuna Chamber of Industry and Commerce, about a raft of issues. But, Mr. Servant Leader, we, one of the things that you're saying we're going to do is put a, a, a face to the name and get a little information about you. Now, we know that you actually came to or the presidency. It happened on the 27th of July, which is a date it will be easy to remember. But what are some of the other things? Uh, who put you along the, along the path? Why say, OK, well, this is something that I want to be a part of, where you could be doing other things like was really lying with friends, seeking your own interests and dealing with your own business. So give us a little idea. What are some of those things that say, okay, well, this is who Ramon Gregorio is? Well, thanks for that. Um, well, my name is Ramon Gregorio. I'm born and bred in Kirup, Alice Street, Kirup in particular. And I have grown up in a multi-ethnic, multi-dimensional environment um, in Kirup. And I always say Kirup is one of the melting pots of, of society in Trinidad and Tobago, where you have East Indian, Afro, mixed, um, you have Muslim, Hindu, Catholic, Baptist, all residing in one physical space. And growing up in that environment, of course, playing sports and, 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 and pursuing studies at the University of the West Indies have shaped who I am as a person. And um, the one common theme from my childhood till now, and something that has been drummed into my head by my mother, uh, my late mother, is service to people, service to humanity and humility. And that is what I think I bring to the table more than anything else. Um, 
So born and bred in, in, in Kirep, born and bred in the East-West Corridor, understand the challenges of the East-West Corridor youth. Um, and when I got the opportunity to serve, and when I started my own business, and I had the opportunity to serve, I felt it was it was it was full circle in terms of the lessons I had learned growing up on the growing up in 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 in, in, in the village of Kirep. And then as I was a, as I started my own business, started to interact with, with persons across different walks of life, I realized if the, the formative years, those teachings really helped me shape the type of person I wanted to become. So when I said I was a servant leader, it wasn't something tongue in cheek or the latest, the, the latest leadership concept. It's really something I believe in giving back to persons and sharing expertise, sharing my talents that I may have, and also learning from people more importantly, so that we are able to communicate. My big, I'm a big, I'm big on communication. So when I first joined the chamber, um, I became very active in a lot of different groups, different initiatives that that really more or less completed full circle who I, I, I intended to become. I still am a work in progress, um, still on a journey, but willing to learn and willing to continuously give back and contribute um, to, 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 to betterment, to, be, to, to the betterment of, of persons that fall within, within our remit. And how important is mindset to what it is you bring to the table, Mr. Gregorio. And I, because that, that, that statement that you said, I think it can be very powerful. Small business today is the big business tomorrow. There's some businesses that, as you see them, five years ago, 10 years ago, 15 years ago, that's how they're going to be 25 years from now. Uh, so where does mindset play a role in terms of moving that, that, that product, that business, that, that, that grouping forward? Oh, and mindset is all. Mindset is, is, is the sum total of all your efforts. Mindset is sitting down and studying late at night and thinking about a product or service that you bring into the market and how you're going to make it succeed. Mindset is five years after failure, being able to still dust yourself off and say, hey, I have, a, I have an opportunity. Tomorrow is a new day. And that represents a new opportunity. That represents new new prospects and so mindset is is the central element i would say of of, of any entrepreneur any business owner wanting to succeed um if you don't have the mindset you just simply will be average and i do believe in being average i believe there are a lot of talented entrepreneurs out here that come across um our environment both at the chamber and from my personal business lucent research um and we have a lot of talent in trinidad and the one common theme or the one common um um, attribute that a lot of entrepreneurs possess in Trinidad is the mindset. Of course, there are other elements that could sometimes challenge that, but once you have a firm mindset, there are no barriers out here to, to doing, well in in, doing well in business. And using that mindset and moving along incremental steps, what are some of those things that you already have saying, okay, well, these are some of the things that we're going to use in this two-year focus on small and medium enterprises? I think the fundamental element is understanding the mindset. And I like that word that you use, mindset. We have to research the small and medium-sized entrepreneur because everybody is at a different stage of their development. So, for example, the micro-entrepreneur now starting off may not be registered, may not have all his documents or her documents in place. What is that person's mindset versus a small business that has 5 to 12, 5 to 15, 20 people? Um, has a bit of a base has has gone past that growth phase and is really really thriving now how do we get them to the next level so the 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 the, 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 the understanding of 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 the mindset and understanding of the 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 experience and the stage that they are at is very central to us being able to offer support and because my background is in market research and insights um being a chamber president i will bring that a level of expertise and that level of skill to our environment and the, the, I believe in having data I believe in in, 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 in evidence-based decision making at the chamber level so once we are able to understand their challenges we can put programs in place we can develop strategies that could assist them but more importantly we can make representation on behalf of the SMEs to, to central government and the powers that be because we understand the underlying challenges that they are facing through our data collection and research efforts and this is, a, is this representation a matter of just for members or is it for businesses in general in, in that greater Tunapuna area, um, well, the, the region that you serve? And also, someone listening to this now who is in that catchment area, how do they become a member of the chamber? 
Or quite simply, we have our chamber contact, our chamber hotline, 322-4482, which is the GTCIC contact number. And we have our, our office administration that will take the information, that will send them the, the requisite e information via email, via WhatsApp, as you so desire. We are also in the process of updating our social media pages, both Facebook, Instagram, so persons will have a direct um, collect connection to the GTCIC brand, and more importantly, see some of the initiatives that we are involved in. And we've been involved in quite a lot of activities um, during the pan post-pandemic, during the pandemic, pre-pandemic. So it's a wealth of information when one comes to the chamber. It's not just a chamber for networking. It's a chamber if you are serious about understanding and improving your business. It's a chamber that if you are interested in networking, it's a chamber if you're interested in just adding value to the, the product or service that you, you put out there. Over the next few months, you're going to see a hive of activity from the chamber as it relates to training programs, as it relates to, to, to sound webinar and content on, on particular areas of interest for your business, because we have a wealth of talent of professionals around the Tunapuna Chamber who have offered to lend their support and talent to growing and developing businesses, not just in Tunapuna, but in a wider remit outside of Tunapuna. As far as we are concerned in Tunapuna, if you feel at no attachment to any particular chamber, if you feel you're underrepresented, Tunapuna is open for business. Eh, eh, cool thing, Mr. Gregorio. But even outside mm -hmm. of saying, okay, well, don't, you don't need to give us hard and fast deadlines, but what are some of those specifics, things that the initiatives that you want to be rolling out in the not too distant future? Oh, fantastic um, question. What I would say is that we are forming some strategic alliances with other associations, and that is what this pandemic has done, eh, DK. What it has done is said, we don't, we're not going to go on this journey alone. We have been working with the Samoa Business Association. We'll be teaming up with the Arima Business Association, for example, for our post-budget discussion next week um, on the 27th of, of September from 7 to 9 p.m. We'll also be reaching out to other stakeholder associations who are part of the chamber and we are part of their environment and we'll be combining. So for example, we have a, we are having preliminary conversations with the Human Resource Management Association, HUMAT, and we have a very similar mandate in terms of developing and growing the SME environment. So a lot of the programs, for example, on offer in that space, you can get it through the chamber also, the Greater Tunapuna Chamber of Industry and Commerce. We have an ongoing conversation with the TTCSI, Trinidad and Tobago Coalition of Services and Industries, who is a member of our chamber, and we, they have a wealth of resources that could benefit the SME. So what we are looking at is strategic linkages in a very short to medium term, where you join the chamber on Monday, and by Friday you could, be, you could have access to a range of different content that previously did not exist before. And that is what we bring into the space. Not just, and as I mentioned earlier, it's not just networking it's not it's about building capacity it's about being able to reach out there and carry your business to the next level because of things that you've been exposed to at the chamber level and i can hear some people listening to you at this point in time and say that is performance but we want to thank you so much <laughs> mr gregorio ramon gregorio president of the greater tunapuna chamber of industry and commerce looking at issues affecting the, the the region and also what the chamber is doing to address some of those. And on behalf of the entire TTT News team, this has been In Depth with me, DK Ronstar. Thank you so much for joining us. <laughs>